they're still really standing out to me. But you look at both of these drafts. Um, I, I mean, my, my first reaction is honestly that Extreme Gaming's draft, that Death Prophet finish, it really just kind of feels like a complete draft. They got everything taken care of. They got the push. They got the carry. They got the crowd control. In that perspective, it seems pretty strong, right? But what about you guys? Yeah. Do, you, do you have a favorite draft here? I, I mean, definitely, I feel like Extreme Gaming have the easier to execute draft. I think it's just like a very prototypical draft. You've got your push, you've got your team fight, you've got your disables, you've got decent lanes. Um, but it's also, I mean, I think that if, if you want to talk about a weakness, it's just, it's a big cookie cutter. It's like the kind of draft you feel like you've seen and played against countless times. So you kind of know where their timings are, when they're going to look to fight you. Um, most teams just have an understanding of how to play against this type of draft. And then you look at secret stuff and you're just like, what the hell are they doing? They're doing safe lane Viper. They played one Viper during the LCQ and it was in the off lane. No team's really playing carry Viper. So I think with Secret, there's just a bit of a, you don't know what you're going to get this game. Mm -hmm. So here we go. Game number one, officially kicking it off. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. The LCQ, the playoff stage. This is a winner bracket matchup, of course, between Secret and Extreme Gaming. You're in this double elimination, but still, you want to keep advancing on. Stay in that winner bracket, of course. Best out of three coming at you. I was seeing to see if, going to see if they did any of the cog plays we mentioned with the Shadow Fiend, but no, it's and we have seen a lot of this with the Shadow Fiends too lately, is getting that shadow raise at level one. And that's the case here. So they're posturing in the mid. Doesn't look like any engagement's gonna take place. Yep. I don't think we'll see any major clashes early on, as you mentioned, just getting that some of these early vision down. Try and block some of those small camp, small camp pulls and just make sure that you're kind of set up for some of those early rotations. And for the, when you're looking at like how you want to play your safe lane and off lane, it's always going to be centered around those pull camps. So, Gods, I know you're saying about the Viper idea, especially with the Viper of the Marcy, how it's good in that safe lane matchup against the Terror Blade. And, well, he would kind of just accept the fact. It's almost similar, though, here, right, where Darkseer is just as annoying with an Iron Shell and a Marcy partner. So... Similar concept, anyways, for the Terror Blade. As we say that, Terror Blade is going to the top currently. Yeah, I I think they would have dodged the Darkster, I guess, lane. I, both teams probably playing a bit of mind games. They've got that vision down. Um, I, I, the Darkster is annoying, but it's maybe not quite as strong as it used to be. The Iron Shell's just, you know, over the years received nerfs on how much damage it does. So, if anything, the, the worst lane for TB is Viper. So, I feel like, if anything, maybe Extreme Gaming got a read on these lanes and found a way for the Terra Blade to, to dodge this Viper lane, because that's going to be the best way for TB to actually have a laning stage, is to play into Darkseer, not into Viper. Well, currently he's got both of his supports up here, and Lion and the Nature uh, Tree Protector, that is, as Puppy pops that battery assault, starts running him away, now he finds a Lion, so <laughs> finding himself in a 1v2 all of a sudden, so... Who knows, maybe, maybe kind of the old school tri-lane even happening for Extreme Gaming. That's essentially what we have right here, Overgrowth Early on Resolution. I don't think he's dead here necessarily, but he's going to take plenty of damage, force out some early regen. But Puppy once again flanking back in and going to pop that battery assault. He's got so the Iron Shell. Oh, he does. It's not going to be a kill, but yeah, get some low. Yeah, they're doing this 2v3. You need to win this top lane. When you try lane, like, I don't mind the idea of try lane to secure this TB farm, but you, they know their Doom is getting nothing out of the bottom lane. If anything, he may be going down here in just a second. So they have to do well up top. <laughs> yeah, this is not friendly for Doom, especially being by himself. He is finally going to get some assistance as Tree and Protector makes his way over there. But you look at Mars even going in deep. I don't think he's going to make a play, but this intimidation, we'll call it going to happen there so yeah i just love the, the puppies to, again even in a three versus two he's just still running at them with that battery saw and again the iron shell applied it kind of just shows you the the confidence he had and he was right they eventually have to rotate out yep no so definitely a lane where i think uh pyw has to play very cautiously but he's got the boots online so that gives him at least an you know okay way to kind of play into the clockwork as long as he doesn't like clock it on top of him uh, the big thing is going to be how they try and salvage old 11's game down bottom because this is a, I mean, there, there's no really w good way to salvage a Viper lane. Uh, but as a Doom, of course, he can always fall back to that jungle and catch up a bit later on. <laughs> it is a pick your poison kind of deal. So you want to go pick up the Darkseer or the Viper if you're terribly. Well, neither one plays, well, unfortunately, that's not an option. So he is uh, currently doing that jungling. But as you'd expect, Puppy's still nearby. They're going to show their frustration, putting the stun out. Things align with that Earth Spike, but <laughs> Puppy, he ain't leaving anytime soon. 
He's still gonna. Yeah, he, he wants to steal some of these neutral creeps, but Lou not giving him a chance to go in. Battery assault, one of the nice buffs it had a few patches ago, doing double damage on creeps, but they make sure that puppy doesn't get any of those last hits here, and they just want to keep making sure they don't let puppy get all these pulls off because that's going to really limit their ability to win this top lane if puppy gets a lot of pulls off. Mm -hmm. Mid lane matchup. We haven't really mentioned that just yet. Death Prophet versus the Shadow Fiend, though. Yep. And currently 15 1 Death Prophet, 14 and 2 Shadow Fiend. So very even is uh, going as you'd maybe expect. I mean, Death Prophet's certainly receiving a couple of those nerfs recently. Yeah. And if you go back to when SF was like one of these very top meta mid heroes, it was often picked into Death Prophet because uh, the idea with Death Prophet is you need to burst her down quickly during Exorcism or she just eats you alive. Not to mention the Spirit Siphon is this slow heal over time. So. The burst damage of Razors and Requiem is a good answer to Death Prophet. So, a bit of an interesting pickup by Extreme Gaming to go for a last big Death Prophet here. Living armor being applied, but look at Marcy just sitting there. <laughs> just waiting yeah. for the Mosaic. Finds the moment. Guys, that Dispose. The Dispose backwards. Already has the Siphon, though. Healing on up in Death Prophet. There's no chance at that kill. The double Siphon. You just accept that he's living and run away. Yeah. Nisha had, you know, two more Razors. Maybe even three more Razors there. Uh, with the cooldowns, but there was yeah no way to burst through Paparazzi. He's got a range up now. Uh, both teams just like looking to secure some of these runes here. Paparazzi, yeah, gets the top rune. Nisha will get the bottom. So both these mid laners getting close to that level five, and that's really where SF I think has suddenly a, a big boost in his kill power is these level three raises. Mm -hmm. See him playing fairly aggressive right there. The race is already coming out, but a death swarm in response, or a crypt swarm, excuse me, in response from the Death Prophet. So. Not going to back down. Bottom lane, Viper 17 and 10. Doom is 12 and 2. So, understandably, Crystal's having a good time. And speaking of that, Doom might be more trouble. Rebound in. The auto attacks. DY doing what he can. Puts the armor up. Going to go for the auto attack onto the Viper, but that's not going to scare him off enough. Old 11 in trouble. Scorched Earth has been activated to Korth. He's regening. He has the salve, but there's no way he's getting that off. Chrysalis finally gets first blood. Meanwhile, the top lane. Puppy will go down as well, but we're not done just yet. It's finally going to kill Lion. And Resolution will take that. So a two for one. Favoring Secret. Yeah, the top lane trade, great for Extreme Gaming. The TB, you know, being, being a part of that kill and then getting his Metamorph off, getting some good damage out on Rezo. But yeah, bottom lane, just barely getting the first blood. But that's, that's one of those cases, though. I mean, the fact he hasn't died yet, maybe almost... Dare I say surprising in itself, but again, it's not gonna, it's gonna continue to be a pretty bad time for this Doom, and what do you do? I mean, they, they kind of have to accept that the sacrifice is there, I suppose, but Doom, can he just jungle now? I mean, is there an obvious play here, or is it just kind of know that you're gonna be behind? I think he's kind of gonna stick it out in this bottom lane. Like, the Frost Armor, he's sitting on, like, 20-plus armor before with that Devour plus Ice Armor and the Treant uh, Living Armor on top of it, so he's got some good sustain and defensive you know capabilities here it's just about playing the lane when it's near his tower once he pushes up too close to that enemy tier one the lane you know that's where you've got to you know be very careful about not getting jumped on top of mm -hmm. terra blade pop of the reflection doesn't have the metamorphosis puppy manning up and may regret this resolution running in unfortunately gets there late he will search an iron shell himself though those punches doing plenty of damage to the line and I, i'm guessing he's gonna get this skill yeah the vacuum yeah. to secure that one and thus starts the 60 second cooldown on that ability, but makes it an eye for an eye there with the trade. Yeah. I think that's one thing Secret Sun will up here is like, even when the TB line have found kill openings, they always get the trades. And that's definitely one of the big strengths of Dark Series. Just Iron Shell early on in the lane stage, just so much damage. So as long as he's got it up, yeah, they go on you, they maybe kill you with their chain disable, but this, you know, this line should always pay the price. Two deaths on PYW, both times coming from when he got a kill for his TB. Mm hmm. I want to go back to the Shadow Fiend. So I know we kind of addressed it a little bit in the in the draft yeah. and we're getting ready for the game, but now that we're about seven minutes in, is there what's the vibe you're feeling? Is this gonna be magic? Shadow Ray's build, or are we gonna see the right click style? But top lane. Oh, hold that thought because I'll give a chance to think about it because they're going to the top lane. And right now, resolution in a lot of trouble. Exorcism committed for this. They better get this kill. Wall's gonna be using a response, but it's not gonna be nearly enough to survive, and paparazzi help secure that kill. Yeah. Great job by PYW. Saves the Earth Spike. You've got to catch him on the Surge, otherwise he's just going to zoom on out of there. So, hitting an Earth Spike, you know, 
on the surge timing is not the easiest thing in the world, and he might make sure they get that kill. Mid lane being pressured here, they've got to get the SF off this tower because with that siege creep, it got the tier one mid down to half health, and when you've got a tree protector, you want to defend every single tower you can. Oh, Marcy! Wow, but... she's out. <laughs> <laughs> Just Marcy thinks. Just, I mean, it's like uh, we can sit here and laugh. XG is like, why do we give them that hero? <laughs> what were we thinking? <laughs> yeah, that's unfortunate. Yep. But yeah. So yeah, good, good rotation. Of course, going to that point, they saw the gank from Death Prophet, so naturally they pushed them in tower. But Death Prophet got back to the mid lane pretty quickly there, so that was a good job. Yeah. And the nice thing is when you've got Treant, you can make these more aggressive rotations because typically losing, you know, a thousand health on your mid tier one tower isn't it is a pretty bad trade to make. Like, even though you get a kill up top, uh, you invest a lot of resources, you give a lot of farm, but because Treant Protector can kind of heal this tower up over time, I think Extreme Gaming are going to feel a bit better about the position they're in there. Yeah, it's something we're going to have to continue to keep an eye on. Again, it's been a while since they had a tree and protection in the game, so having to remember the fact, though, that those towers can be even healed on up a little bit. I mentioned the tower, but Half-Life currently top lane. PYW died a couple of times. The third one could be coming. The vacuum is not going to secure the kill, though. Again, that's a longer cooldown. Good getaway from Lion. Yeah, BYW, the fact he's only died twice against uh, Clockwork plus Darkseer duo is pretty damn impressive. Especially when, you know, what we said earlier, it's like they're deaths when they're getting kills. So, really good play from him in this top lane. Yeah, speaking of getting kills, Secret, there's really not much to say about that one. They just rotated down here and happened to find a tree and protector hiding with his brethren yeah. of the trees. And easy kill for them. And that's going to transition nicely into a bottom tower push. Doom is here with doom no he's level six but he doesn't have it actually choosing not to level it so yeah he just tps out no no point they do send tree and protector down bottom but this is more just to delay and be annoying he can play over these trees he's dropping the nature's grass but it's gonna be careful secret will try and hunt him down marcy one of those heroes that can maybe find him in the trees but definitely a scenario where if you're extreme gaming you're thinking we got to take this top tier one tower uh we're gonna invade the enemy jungle because bottom lane viper is just so damn strong i think secret's doing the right move which is playing around Viper. He's Crystallis is the strongest player hero on the map right now, so anywhere he goes, extreme gaming are gonna kinda just avoid. Speaking of Crystallis, uh, Viper with the Falcon Blade, he's going the Dragon Lance, so it looks like both cores, him and the Shadow Fiend, are going the early Dragon Lance. Mid lane, just some harassment on old eleven coming out. But I, I suppose that helps answer the question we're attempting to get out there. It seems like Nisha is going the direction of uh be a right click beast. Yeah, I think feeling like they've got enough team fire on Doxy, they're going in on Doom mid. That should be an easy, easy kill. kill yep. <laughs> no chance. All five here. Yeah, and just level two living armor. So these towers are not, this mid tower is still pretty damn low. And with the Siege Wagon coming back in, this should be an easy one for Nisha to get with the double damage on SF. There's just no defending this. This is not a good position to be in if you're extreme gaming. You're thinking like, you know, we're the ones with Death Prophet. We've got Trian to defend our towers. Uh, losing those two quick T1 towers back to back. I mean, bottom lane you expect to go down, but losing your mid T1 there is something they're kind of going to look back on in this game and be like, okay, that you know, that's not really how this game is meant to go for us. Yeah, in that aspect, certainly not. I will say, Lou is he is top in the net worth, and not by yes. much, but he is on top, and that's at least some satisfaction coming out for extreme gaming, right? Well, bottom lane, not some satisfaction. Dream Protector, get a Marcied Chrysalis there to apply more of the damage. Zayat's just pac patiently waited in some fog, saw him poke out, and grabbed him as soon as he revealed himself on the wave, so... Nice little find. It's not the end of the world, but for Secret, when you're the ones in control, getting this tree out of this bottom lane suddenly means Crystallis can just push it, chip away at this bottom tier 2 tower, and it's just experience and farm that tree is not getting, because he's the only hero that can really go to this bottom part of the map. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to the Terra Blade, though, and again, the fact that he is still top net worth. Is it enough, yep. do you feel like? Is he accomplishing, considering the situation, enough? Uh, eventually, it will be enough when you combine it with the fact you've got a Midas Doom. But for the time being, it's not enough. I think the next kind of five to ten minutes of this game are going to be uh, kind of secrets to control, particularly Nisha's BKB timing on SF. Uh, I imagine Viper may likely go for BKB as well. So I think Secret's going to get, like, double BKB and be really hard to fight into. It's it's kind of a case of whether Extreme Gaming can weather the storm and get to a point where, you know, they've got a Doom with Blink BKB, they've got a TB with Scotty plus BKB himself. They need a lot more farm before their lineup is ready to fight. 
Yeah, it, it feels like a lion's a big part of that. I mean, he has some great crowd control, but he's going to have difficulty without, like, a blink being able to initiate. Speaking of initiation, Puppy hook shot in. Paparazzi He's held there for a long time thanks to the cog trap, and eventually the raise hits, and, well, Puppy kills secured, we'll call it. And Nisha's now level 10 as well, and the Shadow Fiend mentioned the Dragonlance fortune or gold already saved up towards that BKB. The timing's feeling very good right now for Secret. Yeah. And this is a problem, like, I think picking a hero like Doom and him not having a good lane. Uh, when you've got a Doom on your team playing catch-up with a Midas, uh, you've also got a TB on your team. Like, this Death Prophet's reasonably strong and happy to maybe make some plays, try push some towers with Exorcism, but she hasn't got anybody on her team to really play with. You can't just play around supports, particularly Dream Protector, who doesn't want to play around the team. He wants to sit in this bottom lane, so uh, I think Extreme Gaming's in this awkward position where Paparazzi's maybe ready to kind of make some moves but some of his teammates are not he's going to smoke up with the two supports these are the, you know you're two he's probably looked around like who, who can actually make moves with me and it really is just these supports <laughs> it really is and uh, tree protector does have overgrow so that certainly is a benefit you have the finger of death on lion aka the ultimates are online they're gonna scan they're just missing though and they're gonna run uphill right into this dark seer now and that's not the hero that you're looking to hunt, necessarily. He's got a Vanguard, he's got a Point Booster, he is way too tanky. Yeah, and very fast fingers. He got the Surge off before a spell was even cast from PYW, so... Rezo dodges the Smoke Gank, but... I think for Extreme Gaming, like, you'd like that Smoke to connect and kill a core, but they weren't really looking to... Oop, pick up Puppies, found one in the river here. He got Surged on up, and Darkseid's like, go get him, boy! Puppy, yeah. he goes in, DY, no chance. Lion's list, uh, he ain't gonna defend that. He wants to keep running. And meanwhile, trying to run, well, okay, well, Metamorphosis activated. Marcy baited a little bit too hard, so it ends up being the trade. Yeah, that's a high ground you'll always defend on Radiant, if you can. And TB sitting on high ground with Metamorph, he's got an Ancient stack there as well. He's like, yeah, okay, I'll, I'll fight. I'll pop this meta. I'll farm some Ancients with it once we get an easy kill on Marcy there, so... Um, you know, decent move for Extreme Gaming, but it does give a window for Secret once Marcy respawns. Um, you know, they're going to know that this meta is down. Good news is for Extreme Gaming is they didn't overkill the Marcy. They still have Exorcism for a potential team fight. But again, they're they're really just looking to slow this game down. They want a game where TP's top of the net worth. There's not a lot of fighting going on. They want this slower pace game. Well, they're attempting to do so with Doom. Constantly using that Midas, and as I just called out the Doom name, he's going to be fine, though. He TPs immediately, knowing they don't have a stopper, so it was a good choice, but more collapsing happening, and I think DY is going to be victim as a result. Yeah, they got exposed, and... Well, maybe not. They didn't actually see him, thanks to the black of the dark. And he'll get away. Yeah, but I would say Paparazzi's in a bit of trouble here. The hookshot gets blocked by DY. What a hero. <laughs> that hits the Death Prophet. She's, she's in a terrible position there. She's in danger of being caught up, but now that they're under this tower, they want to defend this one. And they're going to kill Nisha. It. Yeah, Shadow Fiend's dead, and now a Doom activated on a Viper. The first yeah. one we see this game, Terrorblade wants to chase. He doesn't have Metamorphosis, but he still wants to chase for good reason. Marcy attempted to help, thanks to the rebound, gives that move speed. Oh, that move speed. I can't believe Viper gets out of there, but that's, you know, Marcy Puppy, meanwhile, on the back lines. He's, oh, he's juking. <laughs> oh, Radiant's he like, jumps over the Crypt Swarm. He, Probably still goes down here, but yeah, he's wasting some there time. You go. Hey, yeah, I would say so. He got a TP out of the tree, and if you want to call that too, it's some nice uh, time wasted. But yeah, I mean, the, the, really, the first sign this game, though, guys, that it, extreme gaming actually looked pretty good. You know, and that's yeah. uh, that's obviously a great sign for them. So, I mean, it looked like a position that secret we're gonna like destroy. Like if that death prophet gets caught under the tower there, and they manage to kill her. Um, things go badly and because they saw her teeping out i think secret were under the impression like we can get as aggressive as we want this death prophet tp out they're not defending here let's just dive a tier two tower but they popped glyph and suddenly this multi-shot tower was destroying everything can they kill the terror blade this is such a big kill yeah. if they get it the sunder though on a marcy so terror blade's still alive viper strike lose going to live for the time being the poison attacks it's not going to be enough he does survive i heard the rock would be channeled but doesn't go off and Old 11's even going to TP out and survive. I mean, how does that happen? Nobody dies there for the side of Secret. And Lou just goes right back to farming. Yeah, just not quite enough damage for the TP there. At some point, you can't go chasing and diving too far. Puppy was still respawning. I mean, if Puppy's there, these are easy kills. They just need that battery assault cogs trap or a hook shot. But, um, you know, he can't be there when he's just respawned. So 
Um, not the end of the world. I mean, Secret's still in a pretty good position controlling this Radiant jungle. It's all about denying as much farm as possible away from the TB. Um, mm -hmm. But they have really opened up this window for extreme gaming now with uh, basically that failed tier 2 tower push down bottom. They want to keep playing around that area of the map. They've got a nice deep ward down behind the tower. And you can really see them prioritizing this bottom side of the map here. Ignoring Roshan for now. They definitely will want to go for Roshan, but it seems like first they want to get this tier 2 tower and maybe even enemy outpost. Oh, well, they're going to get an enemy. We've seen this before, though. They can survive. They have Requiem at a distance. It connects. The fear comes out. Couple of races. This time they will secure a kill. PYW porting into the trees. Nisha oh. ends up finding him. And now PYW is in no man's land. Can he get it out of here? They want this tier 2 tower, but <laughs> they'll take heroes as well, and they're going to get another one. There's that punch, by the way. I was going to ask you about that. What are your thoughts there? The early axe on the Darkseer picks up the normal punch. Yeah, it gives him a bit more kind of lockdown and control to play around, particularly with the Blink Dagger follow-up. Gives you this kind of Blink initiation, so I, I quite like it. I think Ferezo is just like a nice, good stat item too. You feel nice and tanky, like you can really frontline with it as well, so... Uh, definitely on board with this item pickup. All right, so there is that obvious strategy. You're kind of, you're, you're definitely pointing to it as well before that gank even happened. That extreme gaming, they, they want to continue as to say, slow this down. Even right there, we saw Paparazzi was pushing out mid. Terrorblade was pushing out the top. So these cores are still managing, especially Terrorblade, uh, to get their farm. So even with what happened at the bottom lane, still seems like extreme gaming can be at least in a fairly confident spot in terms of there's still a good hope in this game. And Nia Scotty yeah. is coming up quickly to Terrorblade. Yeah, I think for... Yeah, this this Scotty is going to be probably the big item player. Maybe they're thinking BKB as well. Not even sure if TP necessarily needs to go for one. Like, there's some disables on this secret site, but they're much more kind of heavy in on that, on that physical damage with the SF and the Viper. So we could see some other variations, like maybe going more into lifesteal here, for example, on loot, but... For the time being, they've managed to kind of regain control of their jungle, get some vision up. This is kind of key for them. It's just, you want to slow the game down. You want to deny your enemy vision. Make sure you maintain as much kind of access to the farm in your jungle as possible. The problem is they've kind of given up this Roshan pit now. So curious to see if Secret make a play for that or if they want to go for these skills. So far, well, we got a big smoke here. Both teams certainly could be colliding. I was going to say that XG doesn't have the greatest initiation. Well, they kind of do now. Doom does have his blink. And Lion is getting close to finishing his. Marcy exposed. Pings come out. So no engagement yet. Fighting over the ruin of 20 minutes. It'll be a regen. <laughs> Prophet says, thank you very much. This tier one mid so low. I mean, TB's just going to send an illusion in any time and just snipe it. But Secret were really trying to bait it. They were hoping that Extreme Gaming would like force that tier one mid and they could take a fight. When you've got a clockwork on your team, you've got the you know best possible initiation there, not to mention the Marcy. So very disciplined by extreme gaming. You know, a 14 health mid tier one tower, they just ignored it. And secret, while they don't get the you know, the fight they were looking for at mid, they do get the free Roshan. Yeah, I was gonna say, I mean, it's one of those, okay, it makes a lot of sense. The game sense there, it's sure extreme gaming reacted to it appropriately, but Secret kind of next leveled it at the same time, right? Like, okay, if you're not gonna go mid, we'll just go kill Roshan and we'll get a free Aegis. Yeah, and I think for ex Extreme Gaming, this was always a, a Roshan that you were willing to give up without a fight. I think the, the position they're in right now, pre-BKB on Doom, on TB, um, they've got one on Death Prophet, but you know, you can't just rely on her to run in. And against right-click damage, this Death Prophet will melt even during BKB. So uh, it makes sense that they want to be the team that may just try and kind of turtle it up, defend their high ground, and uh, not care about this Roshan at least. Roshan number two, likely a different story. <laughs> gets naturally becomes a little more important. Those extra items start dropping, and uh, you're really like, okay, we, we don't want to give this up for free anymore. But well, top lane, PYW is, uh, hey, he's is this. fine. <laughs> I mean, there goes all your mana, puppy. I'll show Got you enough. 13 mana, boy. <laughs> Got him. Uh, blink, though. He's two gold. He'll have a blink. So that is, an, as we were talking about this earlier, again, the initiation, the lacking of, well, they got it on Doom, and now they have one on Lion. And this feels like a moment of I have Scotty on Terrorblade. Okay, Extreme Gaming is starting to really come together now. Yeah. It's very easy to get into, like, one more item kind of mindset, though, if you're Extreme Gaming. Because they're going to get these items, and they're going to be like, well, why don't we just farm a bit more? You know, we got Doom, Death Prophet, TB. We can keep scaling. So I am curious if they're going to feel like these items are enough. I think the TB BKB 
definitely should be. That to me is like, okay, you've got BKB on your Terra Blade, you're carrying now. Um, it's also signals generally that you're kind of, you know, you're going BKB to fight. You're not getting this item to keep on farming. Uh, so a scenario where they get BKB, TB, and don't fight would be a bit peculiar. But this really sets them up for just trying to stall out this Aegis. It's got three minutes left. You don't really want to take a big team fight into an Aegis. So I think more likely Extreme Gaming's looking for that like 25 minute mark to make their stamp on this game. Oh, what a reaction from World 11 right there. Blinking yeah. out right before the raise connected. So he survives, but Shadow Fiend's level 15. And you know what that means with this right click build. The presence are now affecting buildings. So the idea that they could siege more effectively. However, they are against the Tree of Protector. We saw there the living armor was applied and it didn't go down nearly as fast as they hoped for. So kind of that back and forth of the pendulum. The living armor is doing work, man. Now fortification, extreme gaming, really doing a a lot of work here to prevent this tower from falling. Yeah. Unfortunately, SF is very heavy physical damage. So the living armor you can see here in the mid lane just isn't enough. And when it's an Aegis SF, you don't really want to issue it. Ooh, hook shot from Puppy. Mm. He saw an opening, but couldn't quite latch. Instead, they'll take the tier two mid tower. Ooh, or will they? They may need another creep wave. And they're actually rotating up top. Yeah, because they want the doom. They're saying, oh, we kick at the tower. Let's just go for a hero kill then. Resolution, yep. finding him first. Has another punch coming up, and Meanwhile, there's the though, secure. PYW's caught Chris out. Oh, he TP's out in the trees. He almost wow. got punished for it. PYW was charging forward, looking for the Viper there. Because that's a Viper without BKB. So if they caught him, that would have been a decent trade. But instead, Secret get the Doom kill. They don't get the tier 2 mid, which, you know, they can come back for later. But all in all, a good trade for Secret. Yeah, and they will certainly take that. So... I feel like we've been sitting around this two, three thousand net worth lead, though. It's been, yeah. it really has just kind of been static at that point between these two teams. It, it's one of these games where it feels like there's this tension where, you know, Secret are under pressure, but, you know, they've still got SF vibe. Like, they, they're not like they have to win this game pre 30 sure. minutes. Like, they would, they don't want it to drag. They don't have a good Lake Game answer to TB. Um, and, you know, you're getting free agencies. You're, you're stronger than your opponents. You want to take all these out of the towers, but uh, we are going to, you know, hit, it, they haven't completely shut down Extreme Gaming's game plan. We're going to see some big high ground defenses with a, you know, five, six slotted TB very likely in this game. And that also means, though, that while the replica, that with a Terror Blade yep. in the game, it's uh, the lag is bound to commence. <laughs> those illusions going to be all over the place for both sides, so. Look forward to those matches or those fights taking place. Yeah, and that's probably a big part of why Secret are, you know, they are taking these objectives, but they're, they're not really playing as if they're under a huge amount of pressure in this game because they've got darts here. You know, they're feeling like, okay, the stronger TB gets, we've got wall, we've always got, you know, ways to play into the TB late game. At the same time, then you've got the kind of counter to the, the darks here kind of, which is maybe the lion. You can you can instantly kill off that TB illusion with your mana drain. So um, it's going to be kind of interesting to see if Secret can you know, then try and make sure they have to jump and kill this PYW lion in these fights and not let him cast his spells or the fights will look very good for extreme gaming. Well, we talk a lot about timings this game. Another interesting one with XG, they, they go for the five player smoke as soon as the Aegis wears off. So go hoping yeah. for a nice sneak around, a nice jump attack. And well, they're in flank position now, Puppy. They get it still. Let's they see Puppy, but they want, you know, they want bigger fish. This is the triple BKB. All their cores have BKB and they're going to take the Puppy kill. Are they? <laughs> it's no. Well, he's got to oh, go. Something they want. He's gonna hook shot away, and he's okay. gonna be fine. Yes, even the Cripsurin's not gonna kill him. So yeah, they're not gonna take the puppy. They didn't. You can tell they, they did not want to overcommit. Yeah, it's it's one of these awkward situations where they know Secret has this high ground cliff ward, so they can't really play into the darkness while their enemy have vision. They got their vision near the Roshan pit, so they're trying to play around their ward. Meanwhile, Secret controls you know their own vision. Uh, but at some point, Secret, you know, they don't want to stick around for too long. They probably recognize that this is a triple BKB. They've got no Aegis. Uh, they want to finish a couple items themselves. So uh, any team fight right now actually is going to start to favor Extreme Gaming. Yeah. Well, Secret, maybe starting to feel it a little bit more that uh, this game, despite the early lead that they have had, it's again been pretty static. And when there's a Terrorblade on the other side who continues to be the top farm in the game, that isn't necessarily going to feel too good for you in the long run, but again, XG, they're now pushing. They're pushing a tier two themselves, and for the time being, Secret's not defending it. They have zero interest. I, I, it looks like, uh, I'm guessing, Roshan is going to be the next play here. We got a minute 20 on the red timer. And that's when I think, you know, 
both teams are going to want and not. Like last time we saw Extreme Gaming saying, okay, you have that. We're we're waiting. We're chilling. We're farming up our items. Uh, you know, we're going to hit this big BKB timing. Now Extreme Gaming have hit their timing. But I think if you're secret, you can't just give up this Roshan for free. We're going to see both teams trying to get a lot of vision around that Roche area. Uh, any team that goes in is likely to, you know, get jumped on and potential traps being laid for them. So uh, it is a scenario where... Um, Big fight is probably brewing for this Roche number two, even though we haven't mm -hmm. seen much action for quite some time here. Trying to help secure that Roshan. Zayek picks up a gem. Going to be delivered out, so going to help uh, counter that vision of the opposition, specifically around that Roshan pit. Just noticing a Hurricane Pike also purchased and finished by Terrorblade. So he's got that utility now as well. More range. Yeah, that'll just help not get kited as much. I mean, you're playing in the clockwork, so it's nice being able to get out of the cogs. Uh, but against like Viper, and you're playing against ra these ranged carries on the end other team, so Hurricane Pike just feels nice to be able to, um, you know, keep up with them and get on top of them. Because if you kill them faster than they kill you, you just want to be able to, to chase. Oh, look at this. We're going to chase Lou. Okay. okay, that was a little funky there. I thought for sure <laughs> we're going to see something, but <laughs> instead of going in, a secret just runs away. He's, he's intimidating. Yeah, I don't think you want to be starting the fight onto Terrorblade if you're secret. You just haven't got the capability to burst him and kill him before he gets Sunder off. Meanwhile, Can they though, burst down the Doom? I yeah, think that's, so. That's one they can get. And one of the benefits of having Clockwork on your side is you can't just be too greedily farming if you're extreme gaming because you can't BKB TP out reliably. Like, you know, there's a hook shot. There's ways to stop it from... From, go from going off and that's a you know a little window for secret but no roshan so they can't go into the pit they've still got this 5k gold lead but they are using the fact that doom is dead to try and regain some control now well roshan has now spawned and puppy spots it it was actually a very yeah. fast respawn there that secret's gonna try to take advantage of they go immediately into the pit the uh you got the sidekick being applied by marcy that's something else you can't forget that's that utility she's helping to bring They'll scatter oh, with the TP thing. here, but three seconds till Doom's back. Will they make this play? They're running in with Paparazzi. They want it. The silence. Here we go. Roshan goes out. Nietzsche picks up the Aegis, but the fight commences. BKB activated from Paparazzi. He's got a double siphon, but he's still taking plenty of damage. Trying to run it off. The Exorcism helping, and he will survive. So not the full commitment from Extreme. And Secret plays it smart as well, knowing they got what they came for and they get out. Yeah. And Paparazzi, I think, was just like, okay, they're in Roshan. We, you know, this is, they, they've probably been talking for the last 10, 15 minutes. Like, okay, we give up Roche 1. Their whole game plan was built towards fighting over and securing Roche 2. Doom dying kind of messed that up. Uh oh. <laughs> Helping his teammate out right there, but Marcy. Now they're going on him. The Metamorphosis has been activated. He's going to cipher from Death Prophet and he starts to walk away. Nisha trying to hold his ground. He's got the Aegis. That's likely going to be used right here as he's trapped down. And yes, finally going off the overgrowth. Helping to secure that. But again, with the Aegis coming right back up, that's why he's willing to play so aggressive. However, Secret's not able to kind of keep the nearby for Nisha to reset on. They yeah. instead spread fall back. They didn't have the, the catch really to play around. They didn't have hook shots. So Extreme Gaming recognizing, like, we got no ultis left. We got no Overgrowth, no Doom, no Exorcism. It is time to get the hell out of here, particularly with Metamorphosis wearing off. Um, DY could be in a bit of trouble here down bottom. He's going to get chased around. <laughs> Poor guy. Kind of feel from that one. Nice tree and illusion out of him, but uh, yeah, secret. They want to push forward. This is one of these late game scenarios where one team is very reliant on these long cooldowns, and yep. anytime extreme gaming use them, secret. They don't have ages, but they're actually going high ground here. They know yep. that's how reliant extreme gaming are on ultis is that they can actually go high ground when they're down. Yeah, but Exorcism still 50 seconds. Terrorblade Metamorphosis 80 seconds. So it's almost like. It, somebody's dead in that sense because <laughs> terrible certainly does not want to pick the fight here without that metamorphosis as we all know and secrets taking advantage they get the tower kill how much will they commit for this rax though and they're trying pyw trying to make the pay there's the wall combo as well as popping going the punch out the rock from the distance and lion at least gets evaporated but terrorblade manages to get out and will survive paparazzi the same story he did commit a bkb for it but he's alive as well lion could buy back but Secret got the racks, and they're still going for more gods. Yeah, they're still just waiting for these ultis. 10 seconds on Exorcism, Doom in 30. And they're just watching their face die, and without ultis, they just kind of powerless here. Even when they get Exorcism, I don't know if Death Prophet can run in. 
Well, now's the time. The overgrowth, and they're going for it. All 11 jumps in the Doom on a Viper. Death on the Treant, though. The buyback from Lion successful. Nisha with that BKB holding his ground against all 11, trying to beat him down. But Lou is still feeling pretty good. No metamorphosis needed. Cuts down the Shadow Fiend. And Extreme Gaming now hunting for more. Paparazzi, he's low on life to the side. But all the Ooh. Sunder coming out to save his teammate. Lou has to be careful himself as a result, but allows Death Prophet to keep going forward and finish the Viper as well. Great heads up from Lou. Excellent team play. And they win that fight. I mean, they, they did lose some objectives in their base, but they do yeah. fight back. Oh, yeah. I mean, keeping your racks alive is just huge for them. Tramp Protector, just like DY. He four-stopped himself in there, hits like a four-man overgrowth, and just sets up the perfect fight for his team. He does die for it, but um, the chaining of spells and disables there was just perfect from Extreme Gaming. Overgrowth on everyone. The Lion follows up with his disables. And despite having no metamorphosis, no doom, the fight goes amazing for him. And now it's kind of the reverse story where Extreme Gaming is pushing forward. They've got all their ultimates all of a sudden, except yep. for Exorcism, which is a pretty big one. But with meta as well as doom backup, suddenly they're looking for any fight they can get. I was going to bring that up. It's almost, yeah, that, that's kind of the worst case scenario for Seeker. The fact that Terrorblade specifically has that metamorphosis now and ready to fight quickly once again. So they don't get all the way to the base, but they take out another tier two tower and now Extreme Gaming will fall back and continue more farm on their side of the map. Uh, something I wanna, I, I noticed a couple of fights now. Doom is prioritizing the Viper to activate its ultimate on. Is that, uh, what, what, what's the logic behind that you think? Um, I think it's like, you haven't got a good Doom target to, to begin with, like Darkseer's probably like a slightly better one but if he's already used vacuum wall he's also got the lincoln sphere um it doesn't feel great like dooming him once he's already used his spells not to mention you're going to play around lincoln so with viper no lincoln sphere you just get get a doom on him and suddenly he's not using nether toxin he's not getting the poison attacks on your tb uh it you know it, it just feels like the best of you know three bad kind of doom targets when it comes to these team fights Oh, right now, slowing down once again. We have a bit of a clash there, but Secret kind of resetting as well. But in the meantime, Terror Blade finishing a Daedalus. Yeah. So he's hitting even harder. 22 more hundred gold saved up on him. And it's a five player smoke from Extreme. The Illusion's in front. Can they find somebody? This is a big moment. There's no Roshan or anything. So there's no reason for Secret to you know, be putting themselves in kind of dangerous positions here. They definitely want to stick together on the Team Secret side as well. Rezo could get caught out here. Oh, blink away. He had the vision, had the observer, and the second that smoke popped, he just blinked backwards. Didn't give Lion a chance to go on him. And Lion's been caught. That's a huge kill. They get PYW. Well, it's how much do you want to commit, though? Because again, to the south, you see Lou's in trouble. Lou does have a Sunder. He's going to use it on a Marcy. He says, Thank you very much. I'll take that life. And secures the kill on a her. Trent did have to buy back. Nisha's BKB is wearing off in a second. He's in trouble. Oh no, he's in a lot of trouble. He gets Hex on up and is a metamorphosis beat down on a Shadow Fiend. The finger of death to kill Secure. Viper, gonna pop a Manta. I don't think he's getting out of this though. And the godlike Terror Blade is online officially yeah. for Extreme Gaming. This TB is just monstrous in these fights. And I think, you know, this mentality for Secret is like, we need to kill this line in these fights, but. He has an Ogre Seal Totem, so I was looking at him like, oh, he's, you know, he might be dead here. He doesn't have a four stuff, but the neutral item enabling him to get out of the cogs and back to safety. And the rest of Secret didn't really want to follow up Puppy's Hook Charm with good reason. Like, you know, you're fully engaging into a Metamorphosis TB. We'll see it again here. Like, this loose positioning here kind of stops the rest of Secret from going in. Like, yeah. Secret's like, maybe we can kill this TB, but, it, you know, one Sunder and he just turns and kills you all with the Metamorphosis. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, it was surprising to me. Uh, the, really, with the way that started, it was such a good reaction from Resolution to blink away as he did. It gave away the head vision there, but, you know, it's not necessarily the biggest deal in the world. And, yeah, Puppy decided to go in, though, put that engagement. Speaking of that, he goes in once again right here. Only hitting the illusion, though. And we'll fall back and be fine. But in the end, XG, they take the fight. And, and look at that overall net worth. It has finally swung in their favor. Obviously, Terrorblade's still a massive part of that. But even Doom and Death Prophet are starting to climb the ranks a little bit. Yeah, we are at that point in the game where Secret uh going to start to feel like, you know, not that this game has fully slipped away, but like, you know, they can't dictate the, the pace of the game. They can't dictate which fights happen. They have to react a bit. And also they have to just avoid fighting this TB. Like in these big team fights, they don't have the tools to burst them down. They, you know, they drafted more kind of 
carries and semi carry, so they don't have the like they're locked down. Marcy blinks in with a di dispose and pull can pull someone in. Maybe Puppy falls up with a hook shot, but they just isn't enough chain stun to kill someone like a TB. Very evident in the last fight, exactly the fact yeah. that he was able to sunder. He was down about twenty percent life, but if you give that slight window to press R, then suddenly things change. So we all know about that. Tier four items are dropping though, God. So that's something gotta start okay. looking out for as well. Yeah, let's see if any big ones come into play here, but I think right now both teams really prioritizing oh, Puppy hooking in. <laughs> Where? I don't yeah. know if he's got any follow-up for this one. He's got the saves from Zayat. That's that's all he's got. Yeah, but it's kind of forcing a save, and now they might be more trouble. Although Old Eleven maybe overcommitted the cog block is forcing Old Eleven to now fall back. The wall combo, and here we go. Fight is officially commands. Lou will pop the metamorphosis as a result of this now. He could be on paparazzi. It does wear off. Oh, the great weapon him. for the trees, and there's the lockdown that they were looking for. 80 seconds. Terra plays out for, and Secrets, it's their turn now to win a fight. And wow, the chase continues. Nisha in the trees, catches him by surprise, and what a huge fight and bait from Team Secret. That placement was perfect. Oh. I mean, oh, Clockwork is going to die back here. <laughs> <laughs> D.Y. He's like, Think, I'll take you out at least. Yep. He needs to kill some creeps in this mid lane, though, and Resolution is waiting for him to show here. D.Y. knows they, they can't easily defend here. Buyback from Clockwork. What's the plan here? How do they defend this bottom lane of Rax? I just don't think they, without TB, no. the answer is probably just they can't. They're going to have to they give have, it up. And They have Exorcism, but uh, I can't really commit that. Doom has buyback as well with his ultimate online here. And you got to imagine Secret, when they see two still dead, not buying back, they're going for this last, this third lane of Rax. Here we go. Uh, buyback is ready, but again, no metamorphosis for 80 seconds on the Terra Blade. Now, we said that before, and, well, they want to fight at their base without it, so still certainly possible. Now, the Fortification going to be wearing off in a second. Treant does not have Overgrowth either. That's definitely another tool that's been useful. It's down for another 30. Lion will initiate, but not much coming oh, out of what 11 wanted. And Secret's really out of there. Well, uh, Puppy had other thoughts. He, he was thinking about hookshotting it. If anything that sold him down, that might be still the play right here. Paparazzi is still in pursuit, though. He is trucking along. Okay. I think I think Clockwork's just is the purposeful sacrifice. Like, just yeah. kill me and let my team go. The, the issue is Puppy did buy back here, and Roshan is respawning in 30 seconds. So, you know, you think five position Clockwork throwing away your life to help the retreat, generally going to be fine, but in this situation specifically it could be problematic that's a lot of secrets control and lockdown for these fights and extreme gaming are eyeing off this roshan pit knowing it respawns any second they won't have exorcism but they're still pretty strong even without it as long as they're patient enough it's going to respawn in about 10 seconds here for extreme gaming and yeah you mentioned clockwork he'll be out for at least another 30 seconds Unless they don't check it right away. They're going to pick up an Arcane Ring on Death oh, Prophet. That's, nice. that's that's pretty clutch as well. Yeah, Exorcism isn't yeah. ready currently, but it still will help eventually. Yeah. Be really nice in the future. You, you wish it could, you know, retroactively be applied here, but stream gaming, even without that Exorcism, they're into the pit here. And Secret in the neighborhood, 20 seconds on Puppy. So if they can somehow find a way to kind of delay things here, someone like Rezo going in with a wall vacuum, they can still contest this Roche. Refresher shard and cheese on it. Zayek jumping in. Seeing what he can do. The illusion and the Shiva's in. Zayek is just dead. <laughs> he buys back. Clockwork's up in two. Not the fastest Roshan. No metamorphosis committed yet. But you can see it. He's going to have a hook shot. Gonna go for it. BKB Paparazzi trying to position to prevent that. If anything, Old Eleven in the back lines. Once again, the two men that finger up death to take out the Shadow Fiend. He buys back immediately. Back over here, though. It's actually... Roshan's still alive! He's still alive! The Metamorphosis is from Lou! Holding his ground finally kills a Roshan and picks up the Aegis, and now the Pursuit is on. The Punch will kill Lion, but Old Eleven still up here. Gets a hit on a Clockwork. Chasing out Marcy is Paparazzi. That's a dieback, remember. She's out for 90 seconds, and Clockwork once again going to fall. Extreme Gaming. Three are dead, and now it's their turn to push. Yeah, they just created this wall. DY with the Nature's Grass just completely blocked the ramp for Secret to come on down. Uh, and the fight itself, Secret were very split up. There was a couple heroes in the pit trying to steal Roshan. The Viper as well as like the Darkseer were like, okay, Roshan's low, let's get in there. And 
Meanwhile, Extreme Gaming, Roche was still on like 10% health, maybe 5% health, and they were just ignoring Roche killing heroes. Um, so the fact the fight was as split up as it was kind of, I think, was secrets undoing, not to mention the trickling effect. They kind of, they lose Marcy at the start. Yeah, it costs a couple of spells, but it just kind of felt like secret were kind of trickling in one by one. And as a result, the fight just went so good for Extreme Gaming. Yeah. Blue leading the charge here up top. Again, no Metamorphosis, but still feeling very good. He sees he even got the Herc Effect right in the backpack right now, thanks to a Refresher. Oh, yeah, he's got the Refresher Shard, so he's going to be able to use that in Metamorphosis if it calls for it. Marcy's still down for another 20 seconds. And now it's Secret's turn to somehow defend the best they can. Easier said than done. Tower's already dead, and the Rax is falling quickly. Can you really commit here for Secret? They got away from Marcy, it seems like. Yeah, they've got a glyph here to delay things a little bit, but it does feel tricky. TB's holding on to that refresher shot. He wants to get a metamorphosis off. He's going to have to wait 40 seconds here, so maybe we see Extreme Gaming kind of slow things down a little bit. Just take the one lane of Rax. Could even wait for Exorcism to reset. They'd love to, you know, take a fight now with how strong they feel, but... You know, wait two minutes, get the double ex get, get Exorcism back up, have double metamorphosis, double BKB. Things can look pretty damn good for Extreme Gaming here the longer this one goes. And they could still use even a couple more Tier 4 items. I think they only have two currently, so... As we do see more and more dropping on the side of Secret right there, but I, I saw Spell Prism just picked up by Doom. So he's got that for himself now. You see some Trickster Cloaks coming out. So yeah, those Tier 4 items making more appearances now. Both teams oh. gonna make sure they fill up their arsenal with those. Oh yeah. And I think if you, your Secret, you're... You're thinking like, we're happy to farm some neutral items and probably try and wait for this Aegis to expire. Two and a half minutes, exorcism on 80 seconds. So there's only going to be like this 30 seconds to a minute window where extreme gaming can kind of reliably push with exorcism and the Aegis here. So Secret want to try find any way they can to kind of delay this game just a little bit longer. They don't want to drag him too far into the late game. They'd love to buy a couple more Lincoln Spheres maybe to really negate what this Doom can do. Uh, but they probably are feeling like, you know, the longer this game goes, it's going to keep looking a little bit grim for them with how farm TV is. I know it can get lost a little bit with shards and ags and everything as we go into this game, but Terrorblade just picked up a shard himself. He just purchased one for that demon seal that he now has. So the enhanced attack speed, move speed, and of course that dispel could certainly come into play. I look for it in the upcoming fight. Yeah, it's a pretty nice one, I think. All in all, um, when you've got the kind of money he has, you know, you may as well at this point. He's got he's playing around the ages. I guess he is going to be maybe thinking about buyback once ages wears off. But uh, you know, just having that free dispel is really nice. Mm -hmm. Well, so with that swift blink, he is going to be chugging along. We were zooming pretty quickly right here, and both well, might have a chance to show it off soon because they pushed all the way out in the mid lane. Makes sense, of course. Their mid lane racks on their side has been destroyed, so. And here we go. It it's exorcism time. Double exorcism. The refresher shot's being passed to paparazzi. So here's this one minute window. They've got the ages for 60 more seconds plus exorcism, but they are very hesitant to go high ground here. And this is one of the I think, issues with these kind of, you know, death prophet type drafts is when you just don't quite have that hero that can really force the high ground. I mean, they do in the Terra Blade, but if you don't feel mm -hmm. confident uh, or feel like you're, you know, you're playing without buyback. See, like TB without buyback in 40 seconds on ages, it just feel, you, you know, you're gonna be feeling the nerves. You're gonna th be thinking like, what if this fight drags out? TB dies as ages expires. We just lose the game off of that. So extreme gaming are opting to play things ultra conservative and safe. Yeah, and going on that again, the bottom lane was being pushed in favor of secret. So yes, they pushed out mid, but the bottom lane being the racks destroyed down there as well. You know, there's they, something else they're having to deal with. So they, they can siege, but. They are behind because of how the game has played out so far in that sense. So they are going to keep addressing that. And you can tell that Extreme Gaming being cautious. The Aegis will wear off here, so he'll be able to swap back in the Hurricane Pike at least. But no more Aegis on the Terror Blade. And Secret, not going to go for a timing play necessarily. No smoke used yet. They're still just comfortably sitting in their base. But, I, I mean, <laughs> can Secret just chill in their base for the time being? I mean, it feels like they got to eventually make some kind of smoke play here. Yeah, I mean... The longer you chill in your base, the worse this game is going to look like. It's a 17k gold lead now. That could very quickly become a 20, 30k gold lead. Particularly if you're chilling in your base and giving Extreme Gaming another Roshan. I mean, we're still at least two and a half minutes away from that. But if you're Extreme Gaming and you're seeing Secret play, like, you know, hide and seek in their base, like, you're thinking <laughs> next Roshan right now. Like, they're probably discussing, like, what does 
forcing a lane of Rax get us right now. Like, we may as well just keep all these lanes pushed in. Line is such an amazing hero to have at this stage of the game because a lot of the deep push is coming from like illusions, manta illusions and things that they can just keep on insta clearing these with the, the shard mana drain. Treen is great for pushing these lanes in. Like this mid and bottom lane are just perma push. So it does feel like next Roshan is pretty free for extreme gaming unless Secret go for some kind of very bold smoke into an area of the map where they have no vision. Yeah, it's uh, the, the pacing absolutely favoring extreme gaming right now. So they're they're not looking to rush the issue. They yeah. are comfortably controlling just outside the map. Of the base and then unit. look where Doom is. Like Doom is way on the other side of the map. He's chilling. Sure. Like he he his team is like right outside the enemy base. But he basically that says the game plan is we're not fighting. But Secret doesn't know Doom is like you know on the other side of the map being ultra greedy. So they're not going to take a fight here. So. Very much extreme gaming, like, we can see that their game plan is not to take a fight here because Doom is just AFK jungling. Um, they're waiting for Roshan. <laughs> Octarine Core, the spell, but he has a three and a half second Inferno Blade, by the way, to oh, go it's... with the shard effect that he has. Of... Yeah. By the way, is that you might appreciate that, right? That's kind of a throwback to the early Dota days, am I wrong? I mean, <laughs> that's, that's like the yeah. old Doom ability, yeah. Level death, you gotta do some quick mats every time you, you cast the spell. All that thought, oh. paparazzi's been gone on. DY, Aeon Disc popped, he popped the regrowth though and gets on out of there, never mind, it's just too much to handle. He buys back immediately though, he's already TPing back in, so secret. They didn't necessarily catch anyone else and that will be the end of that exchange at least for now. Yeah, secret with wards down with the, the vision on that cliff, at least trying to stick around this area, but tree and buyback, that's, you know, a decent little find for them. Get something out of their aggression, but they will have to immediately back off. And that kind of, you know, I think that's secret signaling. Like, we need to at least push a little bit out of our base, get some wards down, and start thinking about ways to contest next Roshan. Giving up another Aegis Cheese, Refresher Shard, Acceptor uh, is going to be pretty crippling for, I think, Secret's chances to win this game. Like, it's not game over if that happens, but it, it, it is an uphill battle. So, uh, they are going to be poking and prodding and seeing if they can find a couple more pickoffs like we just saw. I'm surprised we're not there just yet, but I'm really noticing now, I mean, level 25s are coming, and they're coming up quickly, specifically yeah. Terrorblade, of course. Uh, he's 24 and a half, so I, either the Sunder cooldown or that Metamorphosis duration can certainly see reasons for both, but it's going to be a big pickup here that they might be farming too. Yep, and it's something like Secret... They're getting some XP themselves, but they, when you're trapped in your base, you just feel like you're not quite approaching those 25s. Like, both, all their cores are 23 or under. Um, so things are just a little bit slower for them, and they don't have access to the same kind of farm where, you know, Extreme Gaming can split up their cores to farm all over the jungle and, and map and, and hit those 25s if they want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, of course, Doom, the one that's also close. As uh, he's well into level 24 now and again as we mentioned earlier he's just back on his side of the map yeah. continues to farm away he's building that that refresher because you know why not he's got 5,000 gold now <laughs> let's get in there yep Thoughts he could even roll. start you know at some point he could consider selling this Midas although whoop puppy hook shot but doesn't want to follow <laughs> it up DUI it would be the juicy catch now in this tree protector he bolt back after getting picked off here so any kind of catch on to DUI here could be a really big find for secret yeah. That almost feels like just like a feeler hook shot of like trying to get XT to panic and then react, uh, overreact, but uh, that wasn't the case. Lou just kind of walked away. And, and now they're Roshan. in the pit and they've been scouted, but they don't have that hook shot. Even with yeah. hook shot, I don't think you're fighting this one, unfortunately. Does Terrorblade get the eggs? Yeah, he is. Looks like it. I mean, he's filthy rich, so he's almost at that point where he could just buy one and still have buyback, but his eggs is pretty damn good, I would say. The Terror Wave, not to mention the, it's like a mini metamorphosis as well. Um, yeah, 10 second meta means he can fight a lot better when his meta's on cooldown. Yeah. All right, well, it continues to be the same, especially now after that Roshan kill. I mean, the one difference is that Extreme Gaming could potentially play this a little more aggressive now. Let's make it an aggressive puppy. It's gonna continue to be aggressive, but at what cost? Lou jumps in. And there's that terror wave. It is fearful. The BKB running. The, the Doom actually on a Viper at the back. The Infernal Blade hits. And Viper's in trial. Back over here. Lou, he's still standing strong. He hasn't even used his actual metamorphosis yet. Remember, that was the shard effect. But Doom went too deep. He goes down. So far, the only one dead. As I say that, it's going to be Clockwork. Picked off in the back lines. Making an eye for an eye. 
yeah, BYW just playing the outskirts of that fight so damn well. Unfortunately, well, fortunately, if you're a secret here, it's like these waves keep pushing in, so. Yeah. Extreme gaming, if they constantly kind of go back and address the creep waves, this is the one kind of, you know, reward secret got out of taking that multiple lanes of racks is this constant creep pressure. And they they see everyone TP back. They actually smoke out. They want to go take a fight. They, they're probably feeling like, you know, we can keep taking these trades. Like, that was a good fight for secret, but it's sort of fight that progresses them close to winning this game. A smoke like this, though, is what's going to create an opening where maybe they get a big kill. They kill a Treant with no buyback. They kill a TP and force a buyback. And suddenly they've got a way to actually win the game, not just delay. Well, Doom's not buying back. He's dead for 45 seconds. He chose to buy the Refresher Orb. So he will not have a buyback currently if a fight does commence. And got close there. Resolution was running in, but he's got an Arcane Rune. Deciding better of it is going to TP top instead. And now push yeah, that out. I'm not sure if he intentionally gave up his buyback there. He's just 20 gold short. Definitely, you know, one of those things that could be costly if a yeah. big fight broke out, but luckily for Extreme, that's not the case, and they were able to, once again, slow things down, but, you know, slowing things down too much when you've got Aegis on hands, like, they're kind of at this point where they are as farmed as they're going to get on most of their heroes, um, so they can increase this gold lead, but they're not necessarily getting any stronger. A 50k net worth TB versus a 60k net worth TB is more or less the same hero. It feels like a, a couple of win conditions for Secret at this point is one, just kind of wait for tier fives, right? And then they go bonkers, see yeah. what happens, and, <laughs> and win that way, uh, which is getting close, uh, you know, six and a half minutes away. Um, or the Dark Seer Ion Shell push. He's almost level 25. Does he get the second Ion Shell? I mean, that's kind of that Rat Dota style that what they have with their composition, that's the only hero and the only play that makes sense at that point. So. Yeah, I, I don't mind it. I, I think the. The fact they can keep all these lays constantly pushed out and darks is a big part of that with iron shell is uh one of the ways they could maybe win this game all you know all it takes is getting into that radiant base and they will melt towers sf level 25 now with that you know minus armor um he's doing shadow rays applies attack damage as well so his raises are going to hit even harder now in these team fights but you get into the radiant base with an sf and the, the minus armor on buildings towers will melt yeah well, so we're gonna towers melting Stream Gaming, they're going for themselves. Resolution will punch out the real one. The wall goes down, and Terrible Lewis falling. The vacuum pull in. Uh, is he going to commit a big Not yet. He pops Metamorphosis, so Resolution has to respect that. Over here to the left, that's going to be a blow up on a Clockwork. Clockwork eventually falls. Finger of Death to help with that. Terrible, though, he got out of position. He's pulled back in, and that's Lewis an Aegis. He is in trouble. Requiem, the timing, the regal. Oh, it actually goes off and stops the Requiem initially. The BKB's out for Lou. He's fine. He still has Sunder as well. Worst case, but he wants to get the hell out of there. He still did not use his Metamorphosis, by the way. That was old Terror Wave. Yeah, he's ready for round two, but Seeker may give it to him. Lion's dead, though. He was a little too far up. Once again, the cogs up from Puppy. He knows that he's put himself in a vulnerable spot, but being a good distraction, but those big red numbers come out, and this is the actual Metamorphosis of Lou. 90 yeah. seconds, Clockwork is dead for. It was almost like a bluff the first one. I, it, it almost, it, like you say, it looks like he's maybe used it for that first life pre ages but he waited, held yeah. on to it, just using the Aghanim Scepter to get the baby metamorphosis. Zayat's going in, knowing DY is a big target if he can get him, but he's going to pay Ooh. for that with his life. Thousand plus crit right there. It looks beautiful. And buyback is ready on Marcy. This may they racks. They're keeping it alive. You got to give the credit to Secret there. They're doing a hell of a job at keeping the buildings alive. And so far, it's working. That Metamorphosis duration, though, remember, he did get the plus 20 second talent. Yep. So that is lasting much longer than usual. Yeah, and he's going to have another Terror Wave in five seconds as well. So that's some even additional Metamorphosis when this current one wears off. So just a lot of sustain push. Oh, pull in Terror Blade. Double four staff, though. The immediate saves coming into play. Resolution B could be another wall. That's how long this fight has taken place. Wall goes down, but. The retreat time for XG now, so I think it Ooh. seems like we're going to actually have a reset here, gods, and whew, that fight lasting a good two minutes, it felt <laughs> yeah. like. The full reset. <laughs> it lasted a long time, but, like, there were some kills on, like, supports mostly and ages dropping, but both teams just playing it, like, very cautiously, not really willing to commit any, like, hard commit onto these big cores, throw away any big lives there, so a lot of these buybacks still in play. It's just supports you don't have buyback. All six cores, you know, it almost feels like that was going to be the big build-up fight, and then both teams are like, eh, we'll take, it, we'll take a melee rex and back off. This is insane, by the way. 55,000 net worth on Terrorblade. Yeah. 
Gonna have a refresher now. He buys a refresher and he still has almost 9,000 gold. Yeah. And that's that's really all he's got as far as farm goes. Like, this refresher is gonna sit in his backpack. Oh, doom. Oh, is he actually gonna. He refreshed the blink and he's gonna get out of here. Oh, wow. Oh, he had to refresh just to blink away, but he lives, so definitely worth not giving up, like, your buyback there. Um, old 11, barely surviving. Now, we, it's worth noting here that, oh, actually, it's also worth noting this. Terrorblade actually got by the hookshot. He is somewhat isolated. BK being somewhat panic. He will blink. And he'll be fine. Got a close call, though. But get, get a BKB use, so maybe second cooldown. Speaking of cooldown, though, again, Refresher Orb no longer ticking down in the uh, in the backpack. So, yes. It's one of those. When he does use it, it's going to be curious. Does he keep it in there, or does he just put it back in the backpack and say, we'll worry about you later? Yeah, it's one of, I think in a, in a team fight, he's putting it back in his backpack. It's during the downtime between fights where you kind of switch it up. So he's he's going to have, like, it's kind of like a one-time use refresher roll. Like, whereas yep. in the past, you put it in your backpack, and it just slowly ticks back up, even if it's at a slower rate. Now it's like you use it once, you put it in your backpack, and then it stays there until there's no fighting going on. Then you can, you know, put it back in your inventory and wait, wait it out. But it is a nice nerf because so much of late game Dota is played around refresher uh, and BKB, like, you know, Refresher gives you the double BKB. The shard gives you triple. Um, so Refresher is what late game Dota is all about. Uh, so seeing that kind of little little nerf is definitely well warranted, I think. Gods, we are almost at 60 minutes. Oh boy, let's go. Means. Tier 5 items are upon us here. Yeah, oh, no. this is this is great. This I, My first game casting last chance qualifiers and straight to the 60 <laughs> minutes. Every game's been like this, guys. No, actually, this is the first one that i uh, personally having the chance to go to 60 plus minutes. So I know that, you know, overall, the, the game legs have felt a little bit longer. I, I believe there was a stat that was linked that in general, a little bit longer games, but usually by like 55 minutes at the most. We haven't necessarily got to a lot of tier five items, but we're, I mean, we're getting there this game unless a big fight breaks out now. But the smoke play from Extreme, all five. Here come Extreme Gaming. Yeah, smoked up. Paparazzi pops it in the front here. Zayats and Puppy. What are they gonna find? Oh, well, they found each other. Clockwork, jetpack up in the air. Nisha just jumps up with BKB. Requiem immediately blows Nothing. out the Death Prophet. She buys back, though. In the midst, Lou. Lou or that's old 11, actually. Someone out of position. Pops for fresh. He's got another Doom, even. Chrysalis going at it with Lou. He's not gonna win that duel. Lou takes out the Viper. Viper buys back. Doom activated on Darkseer. Even with the Finger of Death, though, he's still so damn tanky. But Lou will change that. The buyback from Darkseer. But now Shadow Fiend's caught as well. One by one. They're just falling like flies on the side of Secret. But the triple buyback. Marcy's staying dead. Terrorblade, it's time to kite now. Or can he? Four staff saving. The reset. Jumping back in is Doom. They go back on Viper. Remember, he bought back. So did the Darkseer. And they're going to just die. This could be it for XG. Darkseer's out, Viper's out. Last stand right here for Nisha. It's not going to be enough though. The beatdown rampage for Lou. And GG, well played. Extreme Gaming will take game number one. Oh, we got to 60 minutes, but there's no neutral items breaking. What the hell is this? <laughs> Cursed what a fight. Extreme Gaming, they, they pull it off at the end. I mean, this, this was just a game of such discipline and patience where they kind of knew they had this late game TB and they just you know, managed to drag it out just enough where they could get to the point where Secret weren't able to team fight them any longer. Oh man, what a what a hell of a game! You're right, though. <laughs> that put that thought popped in my head. Dude, go figure. We're just talking about. We're absolutely getting.